At this time, I invite us to stand as, they, as we will now receive the military honors. Let us stand.
Friends, we have gathered today in this holy time to praise God and to give God thanks for the life of Ronald Wister Burgess. We come together, yes, in our grief, our tears, the lumps in our throat, but the memories in our hearts today that we hold close to us. We say that it is an end, but with Christ, it is only the beginning. May we in this time, in our grief, as he told us, grant us and will give us God's grace. And that we in our pain may find comfort and that in our sorrow we may begin to see glimpses of hope and truth. In death there is resurrection. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I welcome everyone, but also I welcome a colleague and friend. We had, uh, we have a connection heart to heart with our sisters and brothers in churches across as Christ connects us. We have Deacon Debbie McLaughlin that will come and open us in prayer as family not only were members here, but also as an Episcopal church here in town. So we are grateful. Deacon, come and pray. Greetings and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and from St. Benedict's Episcopal Church. She said, we have many connections and are all God's children. When God, many paths. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother, Reverend Ron. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Thank you. As Mary and I sat together earlier this week and began to get our thoughts together and memories, you will see that there are various hymns because she said, I want to sing God's praises for sweet Jesus' sake. <laughs> and so we sing our first hymn. His name is wonderful. It'll be in the hymnals, 174. And she'd like us to sing it twice because the first time we're just going to get warmed up. So if you'll take the, the hymnals, 174. Let us stand, stretch those knees, and sing together, His Name is Wonderful.
Remain standing and say together Psalm 23 that you'll find in your bulletin this morning. Again, one that Mary said we've got to, got to share. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness' sake, same sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We're to sing, I know whom I believe, 714 in your hymnal, and we'll sing the first and the second verses. Requested by Mary, one of their favorite prayers and poems, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. And we are blessed today to have Mr. Armstrong come and read those words, that prayer to us. Come. Can you hear me? God bless you and us. I was lucky enough to walk in the shadow of a man I loved. I've shared a class with him over and over and over, and I'm constantly reminded of what gentleness can do to the soul. So before I say, I've been asked to give this prayer, but I want you to hear the prayer that Ron asked his class to give on the final class which he did not give. You guide me, and with your instruction and a true end, you will receive me with honor. What else can I do in heaven, but since I have you, what else could I want to do on earth? That's Ron. That's his life. And those that knew him 
we're very lucky. I have walked in the shadow of a great man. Lord, keep me to speak with the voice that you would want. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me now love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to be under... My mind just flew away as taking flying lessons, so bear with me. <laughs> to be consoled and to be consoled. To be understood as to understand. That was an important thing to say. To be loved as to love. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. May his light shine forever. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. You are a blessing, and you are a light in the midst of our darkness. We have a time of tribute and from family and friends. And I will first like, I know there'll be many, and I will let all those that can, would like to speak, speak today, but I will also make sure we do it in a timely fashion. <laughs> we now have his brother here from Richmond, Virginia, to come and read us the obituary. Please come now and share with us these words of his life. Good morning, I'm Mark Burgess. I'm um, Ronald's little brother, and always was, and probably will always remain the little brother of the family. Um, it's my honor to share with you uh, Ron's obituary. Ronald was born on January 13th, 1941, to Reverend John A.C. Burgess and Ruby Veers Burgess in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Left to cherish his memory are his wife, Mary Burgess of Pembroke Pines, Florida, son, John Burgess of Cleveland, Ohio, son, David Burgess and his wife, Lily of Richmond, Virginia, daughter, Cindy Burgess, Amira, and husband, Isam Sam uh, Amira of Cooper City, Florida. Grandson, Tony Burgess, stationed in Alaska. Granddaughter, Hannah Amira of Cooper City, Florida, his three siblings, Malcolm Burgess and his wife Merle and children of Yorktown, Virginia, Enid Burgess of Los Alamos, New Mexico, and Reverend Mark Burgess and his wife Ruth and children of Williamsburg, Virginia. Upon completing his bachelor's degree in Divinity School at Texas Christian University, TCU, in Fort Worth, Texas, Ronald was commissioned as a United States Army chaplain. He served on active duty for seven years in Texas, California, and Germany, including two tours of duty in South Vietnam. In addition, Reverend Burgess served 31 years as a pastor following active duty, including ministry with the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and the United Methodist Church within the Holston Conference. While serving as a pastor, he served for another 18 years as an Army Reserve Chaplain and National Guard Chaplain in Virginia until he retired at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Reverend Burgess led a Bible study for 10 years in retirement with Plantation United Methodist Church. For 10 years, he also served as a chaplain for the Broward County chapter of the Military Officers Association of America. While working in Hereford, Texas, he met Mary Jimenez, daughter of Matilda and Victoriana Jimenez of Taft, Texas. They had 58 years of marriage and service in churches together. The unselfish, unconditional, loving, and warm support of Mary has been key to Ronald's ministry. She has fully served right along with him. Ronald loved watching football. 
particularly his college team of TCU Horned Frogs. He also indulged in reading books. He loved fiercely and deeply, and we take comfort in knowing that Ronald is now with the Lord at peace, surrounded by everlasting light. Interment will be at South Florida National Cemetery in Lake Worth, Florida. I know that want to share and speak. Um, share now. Okay. And you know that you can just hand it off to me. I can read. Come on over here. Yeah. Everybody wants to hear your sweet voice. Stand by me. I'm standing right here. Speak loud. First, I want to thank you, each and every one of you, for coming today to show your love and appreciation for Ron, your friend and my husband. Ron is now with Jesus in his new home in heaven. We will meet again someday in our new holy and healthy body. Thank you also, PUMC, Pastor Martha, and so many of you for supporting me and my family during this time. Ron would have been so glad and thankful to you for your kindness I can still feel his presence now and then because he loved me and took care of me. But most of all, I truly feel the presence of my best friend, Jesus. He is my rock, my strength, and my Redeemer. So, God will take care of me. Amen. Like the hymn says, God will take care of you through every way or all the way. He will take care of you. He will take care of you. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is faithful. Thanks again, everyone. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and fill you with his peace, his love, and grace. Amen. 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 I think we have another preacher among us. <laughs> Get ready, Mary. I'll let you preach one Sunday. <laughs> what beautiful words from the heart. There are others that want to share at this time who would like to come up and share your, your thoughts from his son. Hello, I'm David Burgess. Reverend Burgess was my father. I'm his second son. His passing away was too unexpected and too quick. I spent the last 10 days. I spent the last 10 days trying to accept that I can no longer call him on the phone. and talk about what my wife and I are doing and how my son is doing in Alaska. My father had difficulty adjusting the cell phones. He often turned off the phone when he wasn't using it. The first time he did a FaceTime call, he held the phone camera to his ear. <laughs> he would call me when he wanted to talk, but I had to call my mother to talk to my father. I know that I haven't called my parents as often as I should have. I get very absorbed in my own life, 
My wife, Lily, talks to her parents several times a week. She's taught me to take some time to look up from my desk and pay attention to my family. Thanks to Lily over the past few years, I've been talking to my parents much more. I can't thank you enough, Lily. I last talked to my father on Mother's Day. Honestly, I don't remember everything we talked about, but I remember being happy that he was through his stressful surgery and would soon be able to walk with much less pain. That was our last conversation. It was a good one, but I wasn't prepared for it to be our last. My father was a role model in the most important ways. He was a highly ethical, moral, intelligent, and loving person. My character is largely defined by what I learned from him, not just from what he told me, but from knowing him and, and watching him. He guided me. I wasn't done learning from him. I thought there was more time. Even though he's gone to paradise, he'll always be with me as I consider the lessons he taught me and the decisions I'll be making in the future. But there will be no more phone calls. Dan. I love you and I miss you. As he stands, his grandson is here from Alaska. Will you please stand? We want to give you our thank you for a grateful nation and your brothers and sisters in Christ. We're so glad as you serve and protect us. Thank you. There are others that would like to share, some from the Sunday school class. Um, I know, there we go, here she comes. <laughs> I should say, I say Sunday school, Bible, Bible study, um, discussion, and yes, blessed class. Thank you for coming to share. I miss Ron a whole lot because I used to go to the um, Bible study on Wednesday, and he was so approachable, and if I had any situation in my mind, I could always go to him and talk to him. And it was Mary's birthday that Sunday, and I reach over there, and I was singing the song to Mary. Um, oh, how old are you now, um, Billy Boy? I went to seek a wife. She's the half of my high. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mama. And I says, how old are you now? And Ron says, you know you shouldn't ask that question. <laughs> so <laughs> pastor came along and took his hat and put on her head, and we joke a little. And then I left. And then I heard that in, during the week that he passed away, I missed him and it hurt my heart so much because the people from the class know that Ron was very approachable, very kind, soft-spoken. And you could feel the love vibrating from him, not a phony. I miss him, I really do. God bless us, rest his soul. Thank you. Others? Good morning. Seven years ago, my daughter lived at the end of the street and I came to visit and I asked if there was a Methodist church nearby. I started coming here. I live in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, that's in the Caribbean, and I come at least once a year. That year when I came, I saw a notice at the back that there was Bible study in the morning and in the evening. And that's when I started with Brother Ron. He was really an inspiration. And even back at home, occasionally, I would try to get online on a Wednesday morning. I don't know why, but the last time I was in, I took the iPad from home and took it to work. I borrowed it for my husband, took it to work. I do not know why. I took part in that study. I looked at Ron, and I said, what is going to happen to this class if something happens to Ron? 
Don't know why that crossed my mind. Three days ago, I brought my grandson. I had him with me for a while. I brought him back to his parents on Wednesday. On Thursday, Doreen called me. She said, did you hear about Ron? I said, no, don't tell me something happened to Ron. That's when I was hearing about this. This is the last item I packed in my suitcase, and I still don't know why. But God knew why. I picked up this after Rev said there was time for friends and family to share. And I turned to this hymn, and I just heard Mary relate to this hymn. So I'm just going to sing two verses for you, Mary, because this is God's promise to you. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary worn upon his breast, God will take care. Thank you for those beautiful words and for all of you that joined in to sing that God will take care of each one of us. Are there others? I want to make sure that in the days ahead that you will let Mary know of the stories, those moments you encountered in your friendship and love for, for Ron. Write them down, put them in a note, call her, let, them know, let her know, so that she may begin to build a heart full of memories, more than just hers. But that way, in the days ahead, it will help with her grief as she heals and knows that God will take care of her and her family. You may remain seated to sing the hymn of promise, number 707. And I hope, if you are not aware, look at the words. They are words of resurrection and hope and the promise for today and tomorrow.
I read from the letter of 2 Timothy, Timothy, chapter 4, 7 through 8. I have forgot the, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not just to me only, but to all who have loved his appearing. It's not in your bulletin. It is on the face of the bulletin on the front cover. And I want to read from Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. He has told you, human one, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. But to do justice... Embrace faithful love and walk humbly with your God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Early on, I worked at Wesley's Chapel in London. And St. Paul's Cathedral was right down the street. And so when I wanted to take a walk and get a breath of fresh air, I would walk through the St. Paul's Cathedral. There, centuries before, was the cathedral dom, or they call him the high priest, John Don, a priest of the Church of England, and he said this, No man is an island entire of himself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Therefore, he goes on to say, Never sin to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. He was the one that wrote that, though we know that many others later, Hemingway and others, picked those words up. But priest Don from the Church of England knew something about how we are to be connected and that there is more to just our earthly life but our eternal life. As I heard the words you spoke about your father, about your brother, about your husband and best friend, that there will be nothing that separates you from that love. Nothing will separate you from that love and that relationship as being daddy, your father's little girl, being the son-in-laws, the daughter-in-laws, the friends in the Bible study, the brothers and sisters in Christ in this church, and those that he touched across the continents. Yes, we know that there was always a twinkle in his eye, and I always called it a little smile on his face. He might have been a man of few words when you first met him, but he was a man of wisdom and gentle love. I was so blessed in the three years, almost three years that I've been here, that yes, he sat almost right where you all are sitting, in the second or third pew. And yes, you saw his hat that he had in his hand. The week before he was to get his knee done, he forgot that hat on the pew. (laughs) So for almost a week or two weeks, I had that hat every day as I walked into the office. Yes, he was doing well with his knee surgery, and he told me, he said, I'll be able to maybe even dance a jig when I get finished. Well, I believe he is dancing in heaven with two good knees and hips. (laughs) I believe that as he ministered throughout the continents and throughout the world, two tours in Vietnam and, and as well as in Germany, as well as in Virginia and other California, we can go on and on. I'm so grateful for his blessings. I didn't realize until he and I had a chance to talk one day that we have a lot in common. We are both preacher's kids. And preacher's kids are feisty. We have to be to survive. Yes, to be able to pick up and move, to know and listen to not just our parents, but what God has to say, or maybe the deacons and the church to tell us to sit down and be quiet. (laughs) But as preacher's kids, There is a connection, and I I believe a special blessing. 
And as, yes, he might have been assigned to Texas, but he was also in the Holston Conference as a United Methodist pastor. That's where I was born, in Maryville, Tennessee, where many years they held the annual conference because they had one of the big churches there in Maryville. Again, we shared memories. But again, I heard from you today, and I know there are more stories than we can even begin to put a book on. But it was because Ron's spirit of love and, yes, continuing learning and humbleness, he would always ask the question and always never be abrupt even when he disagreed. Isn't that right, Mr. Armstrong? <laughs> that even when he disagreed or tried to steer individuals in knowing that the scripture is a full of not literal but wisdom, that is there for us to learn and continue to learn. He would even ask me, he said, tell me what you've learned in your seminary. I said, well, Reverend Ron, that was almost 40 years ago I was in seminary. <laughs> I said, we continue need to learn from those that are coming out as well as share and mentor others. Yes. Micah's words Micah's words that are here for us today, that we are to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Yes, if there was an example of that, was in Ron Burgess. Even to the end, he would say, oh, even though we may be divided, God is in the middle of our division. What wisdom, because I believe Ron knew that there were better things to come. There was hope, there was promise, and that is the good news for us today, that there are better things to come with the love of God. If we could do justice for God's sake, we could love kindness for God's sake, and yes, walk humbly with our God for God's sake there will be better things to come. Thanks be to God for the life and the new life of Ron Richard Bur Burgess. Amen and amen. Let us stand and sing the hymn when we, whoops, yes, that's right, when we all get to heaven. <laughs> it's hymn 701. <laughs> Amen. Let us hear these words. Receive Ron Burgess into your arms of mercy, O God. Raise Ron up with all the saints that have gone before him, but receive us also. Raise us into new life, for there are better things to come. Help us so to love and serve you, O God, in this world, and that we may enter into your joy in this world and the world to come. Now let us go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore.
Amen. At this time, I'm asking uh, T.M. Ralph, the funeral home, to come at this time. We thank them for their ministry, Patty, and for, for all that you all have done uh, in God's name. Truly is a privilege being here with each of you today. What beautiful words. What a beautiful legacy. Yours to carry on from this day forward. Friends and family have been lovingly asked to help us recess from the church and take Ron Burgess to his final place of rest. In the future, he will be placed among other heroes and with honor at South Florida National Cemetery, where together he will always, always be remembered, not only in your hearts, but in the hearts of our nation and all those who have served alongside with him. Thank you for your presence and your love on behalf of the family today. 